I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Make Science Room video series. This is the first of several segments on using various methods to reveal latent fingerprints. No make-believe stuff here. This is the real deal. The actual methods that real forensic scientists use every day to process latent prints. First up is iodine fuming, the earliest method used to reveal latent prints and still one of the most frequently used methods. The only special item you need is iodine, which is included in the Forensic Latent Fingerprints Kit, available from Makershed. If you don't have the kit, you can substitute drugstore tincture of iodine. Before you begin work, put down old newspapers, plastic sheeting, or something else to protect your work surface because iodine stains anything it comes into contact with. Choose a container size for your fuming chamber that's appropriate for the size of your specimen that you're going to fume. Uh, professional forensic technicians often use a large Ziploc bag for a letter size sheet, for example. We're using a GLAD uh, kitchen container disposable, and the first step is to sprinkle just a few crystals of iodine into the chamber. Doesn't take many. And then place your specimen into the chamber. And seal the chamber. You can speed things up a little bit if you wish by uh, using your hand or a dish of warm water to warm the iodine crystals in the bottom of the chamber. So I'll put my hand under here. And within a few seconds to a minute or two, you should see violet vi iodine vapors uh, filling the chamber. Incidentally, if you don't have the Make Forensics kit and the iodine that's contained in it, you can use ordinary drugstore tincture of iodine. Put about five milliliters or one teaspoon on the bottom of your fuming chamber and evaporate it with a hair dryer or a dish of hot water. Uh, you can save and reuse the fuming chamber without adding more iodine. We keep one on hand because it's useful for other purposes, including developing chromatograms and revealing alterations in documents. So, we've allowed our specimen to fume for a few minutes. Let's extract it from the chamber. And as you can see, we have pretty dark brownish-orange stains. I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but uh, there's quite a bit of ridge detail evident on the prints. And the prints are on both sides of the paper. So, these stains are fugitive. That is to say, they will eventually disappear in a matter of hours to days, a um, shorter period of time if you treat them in the oven, which is a good thing about iodine because it means that it's completely reversible, and if iodine doesn't work for developing latent prints, you can use another method subsequently. However, if you do get the latent prints visible, you can make them a lot more permanent so they'll last weeks to months by spraying them with a solution of starch water. Now what I'm using here is some water that I cooked pasta in last night. So let's see what happens when we spray the prints with pasta water. As you can see they immediately turn a deep blue-black and at this point they can be preserved, photographed, used for evidence or whatever. If you watch Bones, CSI, and the other forensics programs on television, you might think that everyone uh, leaves prints constantly on everything they touch. In reality, that's not the case. And quite often, someone can handle uh, paper or other specimen without leaving any fingerprints at all. If you want to test this, uh, what you can do is uh, produce paper specimens, one of which you do immediately after you wash your hands in soap and water, which removes most of the skin, oil, salt, and other things that uh, fingerprint development methods depend on. Conversely, if you want to make sure that you leave good prints on a piece of paper, all that you need to do is uh, wipe your fingers against your forehead or nose to make sure to transfer plenty of skin oils to them. Incidentally, I mentioned that iodine stains anything it touches. If you do get iodine stains on your skin, clothing, or other materials, you can remove them just by dissolving a vitamin C tablet in a tablespoon or two of water and soaking the stains in that until they disappear. If you want to learn more about iodine fuming, see Forensics Lab Session 8.2 in the Make Science Room. As we've seen, it's cheap, easy, and effective to develop latent prints with iodine fuming, which accounts for its frequent use. But no one method is effective in all situations, and iodine fuming is no exception. Iodine fuming is non-destructive, so other methods can be used subsequently when iodine fuming fails. 
In the next segment, we'll visualize latent fingerprints with ninhydrin, which is often used when iodine fuming doesn't work.